Hello, this is Anita. Crazy about Captivate. Welcome. It's all about advanced standard actions. You should already know some important things, such as how to import images and buttons, how to change smart shapes into buttons, how to name objects on your slide, and how to group objects on the slide. This lesson will teach you about how to apply multiple standard actions to a real project. As you can see, I built this lesson about what a firefighter should pay attention to when en route, on arrival, or approaching a fire. The learner can click any of the three smart shape buttons in any order and repeatedly. When the learner clicks each button, the text caption and the image appears for that particular button and the other text captions and images disappear. Additionally, I've added a gray button to appear, indicating to the learner that the button has been clicked. Okay, so now you want to create your advanced actions. Go to Project at the top of your screen in the main menu toolbar. Select Advanced Actions. The Advanced Actions window will open. If you don't have any other advanced actions, the standard actions is the default. So the first thing you want to do is name your standard action. So I'm going to name it Standard Action and Route to Fire. Now, under Actions in the first column, Double click. When the Select Action box appears, choose the drop down to select your action. In this case, I'll scroll down until I find Show. Okay, now that you've selected Show, the Select Item box will appear. Click the drop down to view the objects in your project. As you can see, the drop down shows every object that's in your entire project. This is why naming convention becomes so important. I grouped my text caption and the image that went along with it on the timeline and named it en route to fire group. To add more standard actions, double click on the column below show. The select action box will appear again. This time, click the drop down and select hide. The select item box will appear on the right. Click the drop down and select the group of items you want to hide. In this case, I want to hide the approaching group. You can add as many standard actions as you need. Notice the red square on the left-hand side of your advanced actions box. This means that the script is incomplete. It will automatically turn green when you have completed your action. Okay, as you can see here, I've just repeated these steps to add one more standard action, which is to show the gray Smart Shape button. At the bottom of the advanced action box is the Save button. Click Save, and then click OK in the Adobe Captivate application window. I can quickly duplicate my standard advanced action by clicking the tiny icon in the upper right hand corner. Then in the Action Name box, I'll rename my action. OK, so now you just have to change the objects to match the action. Once you've changed all your objects, Select Update at the bottom of the Advanced Actions dialog box. Click OK, and now I can close my Advanced Action dialog box. The last thing I need to do is attach my standard Advanced Actions to my Smart Shape buttons. To do this, select one of the Smart Shape buttons to bring up the Property panel. In the Properties panel on the right, select Action. Under Action on Success, click the drop-down to select Execute Advanced Actions. Then in the script box, select the drop down and choose the advanced action that you want to attach to that smart shape button. You'll have to repeat these steps for any of the smart shape buttons you have on your slide. So I'll go back to my next smart shape button and select it. So once again, I'll go to my properties panel in the action tab on success and select execute advanced actions. This time under script, I'll select the standard action on arrival at the fire. I would repeat this process for any of the other buttons I have on my slide, including the gray buttons. It's a good idea to get into the habit of testing your advanced actions before moving on. Once you know your standard actions function correctly, you may want to learn how to add a next button when all the buttons have been clicked. I'll show you how to do this using conditional advanced actions in the next few lessons.